So in this chapter, we will know how to manipulate persistent data. So first of all, what is a persistent data? If you build your own application and you quit it, all your data will be lost because you didn't save them. So you need to save your data. So there are many ways to do that. The first one is shared preferences, which can be slow, but which is really simple to use. The second one is to use a file system. So before closing your application, you just save inside of a file your data, and you will reload this data when the application will be reopened. And the final one is to use a database. So let's have a look to shared preferences. Uh, shared preferences work as a register in Windows. And the idea is to have key value pair on primitive data type. Okay, so we will be able to save for a key some value. And we can have one shared preference file per activity. It's an XML file. And you can specify whether this file will be private for the activity, word readable, so it means that other activities can read this file and use the information, and word writable, which means that everybody can read and write, uh, can write sorry, the, the file and change the preferences. So the name may be confusing. Uh, it's not shared preferences in the sense of you will build some preference screen, but it's only for saving small data for your application. For instance, the score in a game or something like that. OK. So how does it work? First of all, I have to define a name for my file. Here I can see, you can see that I have defined prefs name, which is the name I will use for saving my data. Then I will grab the shared preference. How can I do that? Only by grabbing the context. Here I just call get activity. And then I specify, specify get shared preferences with this file name. OK? And this is it. I only specify some preference about the mode I want this file to be accessed. OK? How I can read in the file? It's quite simple. I just call the method get shared preferences with the file name and the mode. And then I just have to, to write get boolean, for instance, or get integer to grab the value associated to a specific tag, which is here with advertising. So now how I can write in the file, exactly the same. We just have to build an editor. The editor will be used then for putting values. And I just give a tag name and a Boolean, which is here advertising. And then I have to commit. So you have to know that there are two methods, comics and apply. So apply will propagate your changes atomically. So this is where the shared preferences can be slow, because we have to sync all the different processes they may access to this file in order to ensure that there will, there will be atomic change. Otherwise, you can use commit, which propagates the information asynchronously. OK? So this is the first option when you want to save some data. If you want to save data, you can also use uh, a file. And when we use a file, we, we may have some trouble in Android. Why? Because if you want to store internally a file, no problem. But if you want to store externally 
some file, the SD card may be available or not. So you have to deal with that. So let's suppose that, let's suppose that we want to save in internal memory for the beginning. So each application have its own directory where files are created. It allows the other application to not have access to this uh, directory. Um, and you can uh, share files if you want to. Moreover, when you uninstall an application, all these files are removed. Okay. So, you have a directory per application, and when you want to create a file, this file will be created inside of this directory. So, how we can manage of this file? You have small methods, get file dir, which give you the directory, and then you can ask for listing all the files, and then you can build uh, an explorer. Okay? So, how to write a file? It's Java. So you just have to specify a file name, a char sequence, and then you open uh, a stream with some context. You write inside of the stream, and this is it. Don't forget to close your stream in order to have as few as possible uh, file descriptor open at the same time. Okay, you can also manipulate temporary files if you want to using get gash dir, which helps you uh, sometimes to speed up your application. So, how to read from a file? It's quite simple. You just uh, have a buffer and then you read your stream. And once your buffer is full, you do something with the buffer and re restart uh, reading from the stream. So, this is for internal memory. In internal memory, you can also access to um, some particular directories that are pictures, ringstones, and music, for instance. So, anybody can write into or read into these directories because this is, uh, these are directory uh, that everybody can manipulate. So, how we can get the album storage here, for instance, we just ask for a new file, and this file will be set up with environment.directorypictures, and so on. Okay. With this few lines of code, we are able to list all the elements in the picture directory. So, now let's talk about uh, external memory. As I told earlier, the SD card may or not be present. And the SD card may be present at some time, and later in the application may not be present. So every time you perform an operation inside of an SD card, you have to uh, check whether the memory is available or not. How we can do that? We just ask for the environment if some media has been mounted, and if yes, we do something. And no, we have to check whether this environment has been maintained in read-only. In this case, we can do something else, and so on. Okay? So we have to think about that, uh, because this is, there is no problem when we come from the iOS world, but in Android, we have to, to deal with that. So there are also two... Uh, other ways to save uh, data uh, before quitting the application. The first one is a database. So in Android, you can use any kind of database. There is a support for SQLite, for instance. Uh, and to manipulate that, you just have to have a look to SQL database and uh, SQLite uh, uh, query builder in order to uh, be able to interrogate uh, your database. Uh, and Android suggests to add unique ID for each record in order to be efficient when you, when you ask uh, something in the, the database. And you can also uh, save data inside of the cloud 
but when you do that, you have to check that uh, the internet is available and you may deal with the problem when the internet suddenly goes down and you didn't have saved all the data. So, to sum up, uh, use chart preferences when you have small data to, to save, for instance, uh, a score, a timestamp, or something like that. Uh, when you have to save more data, use internal files. And if you are forced to do something else, use external storage. Finally, you can use a database if you are familiar with that. And you can use a cloud and API, uh, uh, unrelated API if you want to. I will discuss of that later. So this is it.